interesting video where I'm going to be talking all things new Porsche by driving a Mercedes. <laughs> it will make sense, but if you missed my video with Carl Hartley talking about potentially buying my first Porsche whilst driving a GT2 RS, then that might come as a bit of a shock to you. I've been a Lamborghini fan through and through, but this Porsche itch just gets itchier. And well, I have been thinking about all sorts of different cars, and if you did watch my Carl Hartley video, then you might have been one of the people that sent me auto trader links or piston heads links to cars that are for sale. Thank you so much for all sorts of different Porsches being sent to my Instagram and Twitter DMs. But I'm also on the hunt for the ultimate sub £100,000 car, and I did say at the end of the Carl Hartley video that spending around £100,000 on a Porsche also get you quite good value for money elsewhere. And immediately we come up with a problem in the shape of a Mercedes AMG GTR. This car is sub £100,000 and when you consider the amount of car that you are getting for the money this is as good as it comes in terms of road presence, in terms of engine, in terms of road use, but also the ability to take it out on track. It's got carbon ceramic brakes, Michelin Cup 2 tyres, it's got stiffer suspension, a clever traction control system. We all know what the AMG GTR is capable of, but at this price point, when it starts to compete with the world of Porsches, and I have spoken to Tony off camera, because this is Tony at Gravelwood's car, it's in stock and for sale, this rivals a Cayman GT4, a brand new Cayman GT4. And this is what I was talking about when I drove Carl Hartley's GT2 RS. When you're spending nearly a hundred grand on a Cayman, this is the sort of car that you could buy. I will go into some of the finance figures on this car when we go out for a drive, but I can't quite bring myself to purchase a hundred thousand pound Cayman when I've got the alternatives such as this. I mean, 
the AMG GTR versus Porsche, let's start with there, okay? Because I kind of have this analogy on how they are totally different cars but compete with each other. So the Porsche, in my opinion, is like a fine-tuned long-distance runner, not a single ounce of fat on their body. And they can just go and go and go, do lap after lap of the Nürburgring, whereas the AMG GTR, it's kind of like a boxer, a heavyweight boxer, spends hours in the gym, it's this big, strong, monstrous brute, but at the same time practices ballet so that they can maintain as agile as possible and avoid the punches in the ring. When you put a marathon runner in a boxing ring with a heavyweight boxer, if that boxer lands a punch, which inevitably he will, it's a knockout. But if the marathon runner lasts all 12 rounds, he's gonna be ready to go again for another 12 rounds. So they both have these incredible capabilities that bring such a massive smile to any petrol head's face if you want to go on track and just do lap after lap after lap, then the Porsche is probably the way to go. But out on the road where this car is a handful and a complete muscle car, then the GTR is probably the car for you. And when I consider what I'm looking for in a car, what brings a smile to my face, what gets my heart pumping, I don't do a lot of track stuff. I'm not going to be bringing my car on a track day and hooning around a track. So Tony kind of said that the GT3s and GT4s are these ultimate track weapons that you see around the Nürburgring all of the time. The AMG GTR is the perfect car to drive you to the Nürburgring, but not necessarily the best car to take out on track. So yeah, it's so interesting to get Tony's insight being a massive Porsche nerd that he is and also a track day lover, but at the same time he has a real soft spot for the AMG GTRs. My problem with the Mercedes, and maybe it's the same with the Porsche, maybe not, is the Mercedes really have over-milked this car. The AMG GT, the GTS, the GTC, the GTR, the GTR Pro, the GTR Black Series, or the GT Black Series, whatever it's called. Then you've got the convertible versions. And I kind of feel like Mercedes have milked this car to the point where it feels a little bit less special than it should especially the GTR onwards. So there's that to contend with when the Porsches, the GT models, are that much more special and only get sold to a particular client that have already gone and bought the Cayennes, the Macans, the Panameras, the Taycans. They get invited to buy these special Porsches that definitely hold their value better than the likes of a Mercedes AMG. This car is £100,000, and if we go back to the video I did talking about buying a Porsche, the GT4 figures were approximately 10% in, so you're looking at about nine to £10,000 deposit, and they were coming out at just under £1,000 a month. Under £1,000 a month. The AMG GTR, with the same 10% deposit, four year, 6,000 miles a year interest rate using the magnitude finance calculator, which I've got so many messages from you guys saying that you've picked up the new and recently evolved magnitude finance calculator and saying just how good it is. So thank you very much for going and checking it out. I just use it all of the time. So to be able to share these figures with you and have accurate figures to share with you, just makes the video that whole more, a little bit more exciting when you're talking about buying something like this. So the Cayman GT4, 10 grand down, 900 pound a month. This, 10 grand down, 1300 quid a month. So it's 400 pounds per month more, that equates to around 5,000 pounds per year, over four years, more expensive to own than a brand new Cayman GT4. Now obviously, your residual value is lower on the AMG GTR, so when you come to sell it, you'd like to think that these aren't gonna depreciate that much more. This is just my mental perception on it. AMG GTRs have done great depreciation, now sub 100,000 pounds. You've got to think how much lower can they go with the GTs and the GTSs below them and the GTR Pros and the Black Series above them. I think around 90,000 pounds is where they're going to sit for quite some time. So even though you're paying 400 pounds a month more for the car over a Porsche GT4, I think you've got quite a good chance of getting that money back. For feeling special 
and having emotion and character in a car that costs under £100,000, this is not a bad shout. And I know we're very early on in the year, but this is a tough one to beat. I think we've covered quite a lot of topics actually as we arrive back at Gravelwood Cars. Massive thank you to Tony. They are obviously open with Click and Collect at the moment as everything around the world is so uncertain at the moment. It is great to see Tony still selling cars, still being active and remaining accessible to people that need and want to buy a car. So Tony, massive thank you for allowing me to drive this car and to share my experience of what it is like to get behind the wheel of the AMG GTR after so long being behind this amazing car and engine but ladies and gentlemen i will leave it there hopefully you've enjoyed this insight a bit of a quick video a few gopros thrown on the outside of the car hopefully they've stayed on because last time i was here with it came a gt4 gopro fell off and i'm terrified of that happening again because it's quite an expensive day out when you lose a gopro <laughs> i will leave it there guys thank you very much for watching take care goodbye